Welcome to the tour of Tessera's nerf room. The light is not turned on. Welcome to a tour of Tessera's nerf room, a room that is currently a disaster because I am in the middle of shooting three different videos at the same time. Now we are going to bring you on a very special tour of this entire place. First, if you look to your right, you will see three blasters that tried to be something cool but didn't really get very far with them. All right, now look, I understand that bashing Elite 2.0 is just kind of a meme at this point because there are blasters like the Phoenix and when they compared to things like the Strife, yeah, the comparison didn't look very good, mainly because the Phoenix looks exactly like the Strife, but with the batteries down here instead of up here on top of it, and so the weighting was all thrown off. It was like the comparison between a Big Mac and a Whopper. You've got the Big Mac over here, and then you've got a slightly worse version. And while I will say that the Echo is actually a pretty good blaster that I really, really enjoy playing with when I use something that I want to be like a retaliator, because I never really liked the retaliator, it wasn't really something new or cool. It's just another retaliator in the endless sea of retaliators and it's got a better grip than the retaliator and a bit of a nicer trigger pull than the retaliator but that's not really saying much and the same goes with the phoenix like i like the ergonomics i like the way this feels and the way that this holds when you're ha when you have attachments and stuff on it as a pistol it sucks and that's when i use the strife but yeah you get the point and then Every, every time Elite 2.0 something comes out, it seems to be just a slightly worse version of the original. Well, they did a Raven reskin this year. Now just a quick note before I bring in the inevitable nugget. Elite 2.0 is not complete garbage. I don't think it is. The blasters work. Most of the blasters work. Of course, there are a couple that just legitimately don't work and there's no reason you should ever buy them like the Warden or the Shockwave to an extent. However, the blasters that do work, work pretty well. The Phoenix is an okay Strife reskin. The Echo is an okay Retaliator reskin. The Flip Blasters, I still have a lot of things to say about them. Oh my god, when am I gonna get to that video? But you get the point. The series is okay reskins of old blasters. Now I introduce you to whatever in God's name this is. Now, you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh no, they got lazy. They got a raven and they put God knows what this is on the front. You shush. I will explain what this is and why it's so good. Now, let's just first talk about the raven part. I have my arm brace off for this video, even though it really should be on, mainly because trying to hold this thing left-handed is a colossal pain in my ass. So being a raven reskin, it obviously works just like the raven. You put a magazine in the back and then it's a flywheel semi-automatic. The flywheels are actually relatively stable on this one, which is hilarious because most blasters like this have ridiculous flywheels that are not stable at all. I'm looking at you, Moto Strike. I got a lot of things to say about you as well. I bet y'all didn't know that. That alone would have warranted a purchase from me because I never got the Raven when I was younger. I wanted to get the Raven, but I never had enough to get it. And I had enough to get this today. And so had they just had this, that, and called it the, the, the Raven Strike or something, I don't know. That would have been just fine, I would have bought it anyway. But no, they decided, no, no, we're gonna put more stuff on it. And so what they did was they put this white snow looking brick of plastic on the front that looks like a nuclear detonator or something. And this white thing right here is the reason why this blaster is so, so good. I'm about to blow your mind right now. <laughs> and there you go. That's, that's why all the darts have been there because I literally can't pry myself away from playing with this thing long enough to clean them all up, even when it was using the elite darts. And this is actually something you'd wanna use elite darts for because they go all over the place. So it warrants a shotgun effect. That is an air tank with a pressure release valve that connects to six different dart tubes, which means that, let me, let, me, let me get this straight. There was a video, one review I saw of this that demonstrated it perfectly. If you tighten down one screw on that pressure release valve in there, you could pull this thing back as many times as you wanted 
and make all those darts shoot all the way across the room. That is sick. And even if you don't want to do that, even if you want to leave it stock, it is a six dart pump shotgun. That is not a hamp like the, the Demolisher was. And I really love the Demolisher. I absolutely want to get a Demolisher someday because it's one of those nostalgic blasters that I never got to enjoy. What? But the, the competition is really hard now because this is really, really, really good. That is a really good idea. And you want to know uh, uh, the other stuff? The other stuff? You can take this one apart. There's only screws holding it together. They didn't do what they did before. They didn't, they didn't make sure that you can't open it. You can open it. And, 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 and on top of that, on top of that, it only costs $40. That is cheap in comparison to some of the other stuff this, this year. The Ultra Strike, which I don't have one. It looks kind of like this, but it's red. That is basically just a Strife reskin, no, an Amp reskin for $60. 60 or 50, I can't remember. All I know is that it was really expensive. Now, I know a lot of you may be looking at that and saying, well, $40 is still a lot of money. And yes, it technically is, considering that the Moto Strike was that much and uh, was that much as well. But, here's the but. Let's think about this for a second. You could pay $25 for a Phoenix and then an extra $15 on some blaster that has that pump shotgun effect. I don't think one exists. Well, why bother? You can now get them both at the same time built into the same blaster that is far more stable than, than the other thing. Oh, I know, I know. You could get the Phoenix and put the Mediator Barrel on it. Well, the Mediator Barrel doesn't have six shots. This has six shots. It is better than the Mediator Barrel. Nerf has actually released something revolutionary. Do you know how rare that is nowadays? I mean, I mean, look, this is exactly what I was talking about in my last video on stuff like this. And here I go to go blabbering on about old blasters again. The Hyperfire, the Dominator, the, uh, the Rhino Fire. Stuff like that is cool. Stuff like that is original. Here you go. Cool and original. You've got something that everybody will enjoy. If you don't want the shotgun part, you don't have to use it. Just, it's there. If you just want a Raven reskin, it's a good, competent Raven reskin with a nice, very nice, filleted, comfortable grip. Nice rev trigger. Not like those weird ultra rev focus, please. Not like those weird ultra rev triggers that have the little cups. The main trigger is nice and filleted. The stock is a little bit short, but it is extra comfortable, especially for me. The foregrip, even if you don't move it back and forth, feels very nice. It doesn't really feel the most solid because it is a pump. But yeah, focus, please, my God. Yeah, I mean, I've. it's really good. I just realized I haven't even done the firing demo. I've just been gushing about this thing. Let's go do the firing demo really quick. How I possibly could have forgotten this part of the video when it's my favorite part to record every single time is baffling to me. Here we go. Oh no, I'm out of dark. Oh no, I'm not out of dark. Now, here is the only problem I can possibly find with this blaster. One problem, that's it. When I tried to put the 35 dart drum in it, it caused the trigger to jam up because the drum was really heavy. Then use a smaller magazine, because this is definitely worth using on the field, and chances are you're not gonna be using a 35 dart drum anyways. You're going to be using magazines. You're going to switch out. This magazine isn't the best. It's really clicky for some reason, and it doesn't really spring as well as other ones do, but that's another super tiny minor gripe. Anybody watching this video is underestimating how fun that front part is to shoot. I, I'm legitimately serious. I cannot not smile when I pull that button, or I push that button, and all those darts go 
<laughs> explode all over the target. It is so much fun to do that. Now imagine if you did that with an extra 100 feet per second on top of that to make it shoot unbelievably fast. That would be so much fun. <laughs> And it would also be super war practical because you would have emergency shots that actually count and you can reload on the fly because it's literally a part of your primary. There is nothing bad I can say about this blaster. It is all good. And so for the last segment of this video, I just want to give a quick message to Hasbro. Thank you. Thank you for releasing this instead of something else. Thank you for giving a blaster that the world actually needed that you can't find anywhere else and rightfully has earned its spot up on the wall and really the only reason that <sighs> is up on the wall is because i have nowhere else to put those three but something like this legitimately has earned its spot up on the wall with some of the other great blasters that I love. The Hyper Fire, the Praxis, the Nexus Pro, the Rhino Fire, the Duminator. And all the ones over here too, even though the blasters over here are debatable whether or not they're good or bad, with, in, according to most people. But yeah, it's not good enough to make a shelf like that one or that one, but it is still definitely good enough to make it up onto the wall. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is my recommendation to you. If you see this blaster in stores, anywhere in stores, and you have been considering getting one, don't resist the temptation. Just pick up the blaster and take it home. You will be so happy you did, because things like this need to be publicized. They need to be known and seen for being good. It does not matter if the Elite 2.0 logo is on there, even if you are religiously repelled to that logo because of the releases in 2020. If you look at this blaster and judge it for being Elite 2.0, you are an idiot. Because you will be missing out on one of the greatest blasters that have been released in a very, very long time. And I mean that with absolute certainty. I put it next to the Hyper Fire for a reason. This is going to be my primary if I'm using a fully automatic. This is going to be my primary if I'm using a semi-automatic. End of story. End of discussion. Thanks for watching this video. I finally have an outro today. I will see y'all next time.